welcome back. In this series, we're slowly building up a 1-bit vacuum tube computer based on the Motorola MC14500, which is a little 1-bit uh, microcontroller. Uh, but we've made some pretty heavy changes to it, so I've been dubbing it the UE14500. Uh, but the changes that we made were pretty much all in the ALU. And actually, the uh, Motorola chip doesn't have an ALU. It only has an LU. It only has a logic unit. Uh, and so we did a pretty heavy redesign on that logic unit to give it arithmetic functionality. We kind of shoehorned a uh, full adder in there, and that makes doing arithmetic operations much, much easier. Uh, so in the previous episodes, we built up the arithmetic unit, and we built up the logic unit, kind of tried to start thinking about how we're going to combine them together, and then we also tested their interaction with the results register. And the results register is a pretty unique results register. It's a uh, master slave D flip-flop or a uh, primary secondary D flip-flop. And we did that because we needed it to change on the falling edge. And in the previous episode, it seemed like that was all working pretty well. So what I want to do now is I want to take uh, those individual pieces that we tested separately on the bench and I want to plug them into the rest of the computer. And, you know, so far we have uh, the instruction register, the instruction decoder, and a, a couple of the other glue logic bits that we need to make everything work already on the board. So I want to take those pieces and get them plugged into the main part. But there's a, a lot of surrounding stuff that is required to get that to happen. So uh, let's hop over to the bench. We'll take a look at what we need to do. And then, uh, well, we'll just get into it. And hopefully by the end of this episode, we'll uh, see something really cool happen or we'll see something go up in smoke. Either way, it should be pretty exciting. So let's hop over there and get started. Now in the previous episodes, we built up this, which is the uh, logic unit. And we built up this, which is the arithmetic unit. And both of those feed into this, which is our uh, results register. And I built up another one of those uh, that's going to serve as our carry register. So these two boards are actually uh, completely identical. They're both master slave D flip-flops or primary secondary D flip-flops. Uh, but one of them is going to act as a result register and the other one's going to act as the carry register. Now I need to get uh, all of this connected up to this somehow. Uh, we do have some of the exclusive OR unit and stuff like that for the arithmetic unit so that we can do subtraction. Uh, but for the clocks for these, we're gonna need some extra inverters. We're also gonna need some buffers to make sure that everything works all right. Uh, so we've got a whole lot more stuff to fill in here. So let's uh, go ahead and get into it and see if we can get these boards mounted.
All right, we got everything mounted up and uh, <laughs> it looks awesome. It looks really, really cool. Uh, we are getting so close to having this thing fully built out. Uh, but before we turn the power supply on, just a quick rundown of what exactly it is that we're looking at because it's a mess of tubes and signals going in all directions. Uh, up here in the top left, we've got a series of OR gates for our skip functionality. The uh, rest of that skip functionality hasn't been built yet. It's on the bottom. So we can't actually skip any instructions just yet. Uh, and speaking of instructions, this is our 4-bit instruction register. And then we have some buffers for that. And then we have a 4 to 16 decoder. And then we have buffers for those 16 control signals that are coming out. Those all come down here. And then we have uh, what I call the interconnect here. This is just kind of a skinny piece that is doing some control that's required to make this talk to this. And on this interconnect, we have the input enable register here. We have some control for the input enable register. We have some uh, buffers and a little display for it here. Then we have our exclusive OR gate here for doing subtraction. And then we have some glue logic on this one right here. And then for the new stuff that we've built, uh, you can see that the large majority of it is just trying to get signals in the right place. Uh, you can see that we have some uh, massive buses running along the top here, just moving things left and right uh, because it's kind of an organizational nightmare. Okay, and then going from left to right, we have our uh, clock control for the carry register here and our clock control for the result register here. Uh, and then we have a little display for the uh, logic unit. And then we have our result register input control over here. Um, and then we have our full adder and our logic unit. We tested these in a previous episode and the two of them together make the ALU. So that is our full ALU right there. And um, then we have some more glue logic here. And then we have our carry register and our result register. And actually both of these are completely identical and we tested one of these in the previous episode as well. Uh, and then finally we have our carry register buffered output and our result register buffered output. And well, that's the whole machine. Now I have not powered this on yet. I have absolutely no idea what's about to happen, uh, but we do know at the very least that uh, everything down to here is safe. We know that that's all working. We also know that uh, these 16 tubes here and these 16 tubes here, which is the ALU and then the uh, result register and the carry register, uh, we know that those are working because we tested them um, on a previous episode. Uh, but let's just go ahead and flip the switch and see what happens. I'm going to keep a close eye on our DC ammeter here. Okay, quick status update. The uh, 3 amp uh, wall wart that I put in there is just not enough. So I pulled out the uh, DC bench power supply here. Um, and I can see that when it clicks over, it spikes to about 5 amps. Um, which is just way more than that uh, little 3 amp wall wart can do. So I have to build a new power supply, but we're going to save that for uh, in the future. For now, this kind of ghetto arrangement is going to have to do. Um, but I did a little bit of testing off camera just to see that power was going places um, and that things were kind of working and, well, they're not. <laughs> um, I did figure out that I had a bad vacuum tube. Uh, this little 6AU6 here, which has a nice Tektronix sticker on it, uh, was totally bad. It was pulling uh, way too much uh, current through the heater. Um, and so I replaced that one and the result register started working correctly. And I was really happy about that, except that my, uh, my carry register didn't seem to be working correctly. It would store something, but I was having difficulty with it. And I discovered that the timing was all wrong on it uh, because it was transitioning on the rising edge and the result register was transitioning on the falling edge. And so what happens is uh, the clock signal comes in here and because the carry is only going to be executed at certain times, I send it through a NAND gate that inverts it, I buffer it, um, and I send that inverted clock signal uh, back out up all the way across down over to here. Uh, and then I invert that one more time, buffer it, and have that coming into here because I need both a clock and an inverted clock. Uh, and where I send them into the uh, carry register here, I got them flip-flopped. <laughs> um, and I have the uh, inverted signal and the non-inverted signal backwards. Uh, so I'm going to have to take this centerpiece out, uh, make a little bodge wire underneath and uh, fix that up. Uh, and then hopefully we can uh, test again. 
Um, so the next step is to take all of this back apart to get this centerpiece out uh, so we can put in our quick bodge. It's the next day. I got my bodge wire in uh, pretty late last night, but I think everything should be working correctly now. Uh, the majority of the problems seem to be stemming from the carrier register. Aside from the fact that I had the input signals switched, uh, it also seemed really slow to do anything unless it had been warming up for like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so I let the carry register and the result register cool completely down and then I pulled out my uh, low voltage vacuum tube tester and I decided to test all eight tubes on each register. And uh, well, these are the results of that. Well, you can see that the result register was uh, pretty good actually. There was only one tube that was a little bit of an outlier. We can see that it comes only down to about six volts, whereas the rest of the tubes are coming all the way down to uh, three to two volts. Uh, but the carry register had some uh, much more noticeable issues. Uh, most of the tubes came down to three volts, uh, four volts, which should be totally fine. Uh, but there was one tube that only came down to about six volts. And then there was another tube that only came down to 13 volts. Uh, and that tube is definitely going to cause some problems. So right now the machine is actually all powered up. I've got the lights off in the room to hopefully let the camera have a better chance of picking up these uh, little indicator VFDs that I'm using. Now this VFD right here is showing us the result of the logic unit. So there are three logic instructions that uh, the ALU can execute. There's NAND, OR, and exclusive OR. Uh, and so I wanna give those a test right quick. But in order to give those a test, we have to initialize everything. And so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna set the input enable register, which is up here, to one. Uh, and we do that by setting an instruction of 1010. Zero, zero. We set our data to 1. We clock that into the instruction register, and then we clock the input enable register. And I can see that the VFD on the input enable register has kicked on, so it is now storing a 1. Now you guys can't quite see it, but the carry register is currently storing a one and the result register is currently storing a zero. So as part of the initialization process, I don't have a good way of clearing both of those at the same time. So instead I do an operation of one, which is a zero, one, zero, zero. I set the data to zero. This forces a one into the result register and forces a zero into the carry register. So we'll clock that into the instruction and then we'll do the uh, clock there and I could see that both the carry register and the results register transitioned on the falling edge So our bodge wire is working. That is awesome <laughs> And then the final step for initialization is that I want to clear out the result register So I just do uh, a load instruction, which is zero 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 one set the data to zero clock that in and there we go. So now the result register is storing a zero, the carry register is storing a zero, and our input enable register is on. So the first thing I'll test is the OR operation, and that is an instruction of 0110. So we'll do 0110 on our instruction. We'll leave our data at zero. We'll go ahead and clock that in. Uh, and I can see that the instruction register has that stored in, and we can see that the VFD on our logic unit here is off, and that's because we're ORing the result register with the data, and right now both of those are zero, so that's correct. But if I flip this switch to turn the data on, we should see our logic unit output a one here. And yeah, there we go, it kicked on. So now we have the logic unit outputting a one, but the result register hasn't stored it yet because we haven't hit the clock. So let's go ahead and hit the clock and store that into the result register. All right, and I can see the result register has stored that one. The next operation I wanna check is NAND, and that is 0101. We'll go ahead and clock that into the instruction register. Okay, that's stored into the instruction register. So now we're doing a NAND operation on the result register and the data. And the output of a NAND gate is one unless both inputs are one. So right now our result register is one and our data is zero, so the output of our NAND is one. But if I turn the data on here, we should see this VFD turn off. 
Yeah, there we go. All right, so we're effectively doing a NAND operation. That's awesome. Uh, so we'll go ahead and store that into the result register, which takes our result register to zero. So we'll turn the data off and then we'll check the final logic function, which is exclusive or, and that is instruction 0111. So we'll go ahead and clock that into the instruction register. I can see it's stored over there. And the output of an exclusive or is zero if both inputs are zero or if both inputs are one. If either input is one and the other input is zero, the output of the exclusive or gate will be one. So right now our data is zero and our result register is zero. So our exclusive or gate is outputting zero. But if I kick the data on, yeah, we can see that the uh, VFD kicked on. So if I clock that in, all right, we saw that when I clocked it in and released it on the falling edge, the result register stored a one and our logic unit turned off. And that's because now we're doing an exclusive or of one in the result register and one on the data and the output of that is zero. So our logic unit is working perfectly. That is awesome. All right, next let's test the arithmetic part of the ALU here. Uh, and we're gonna do that by adding two four bit numbers together. And I picked uh, two numbers at random and I've got a little program here that I'm gonna follow along with. Uh, we're gonna add 1101 with 1001. And the result of that is going to be 10110. Uh, so in decimal, this should be 13 plus nine, which comes out to 22. Um, and so we're going to try and give this a shot. Now we'll go ahead and just assume that nothing has been set. So I'm just gonna follow the uh, program here from top to bottom. Uh, so we'll start with an input enable register of 1010. Set our data to one, we'll clock that in. Now we know for certain that our input enable register is storing the one. So next we'll force a one into the result register, uh, which is 0100. We'll clock that in. We can see that the result register here is now storing a one. Our carry register is empty. So now we wanna empty out our result register. So we'll do a 0001 of uh, data at zero. We'll clock that in on the falling edge. Our result register is storing a zero. Now the machine is set up and ready for the rest of the program execution. So we're gonna start by loading the first bit of the top number, and that's going to be a 0001 operation with the data set to one. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and load that into the result register. We saw that come up here. And then we're gonna add that with the first bit of the second operand, which is also a one. Uh, so we'll do that addition right quick. Uh, and we saw that the result register kicked off and the carry register kicked on. And the current value of the result register is the first bit of our answer, and that's zero, which is correct. All right, so that's good news. Um, so next we're going to load in the second bit of the first operand, and that is going to be a zero. So we'll load that in. We saw no change here because the result register already had a zero in it. We're going to add that with the second bit of the second operand, uh, which is also a zero. So we'll do an add on that one. We saw that the carry register kicked off, the result register kicked on. Uh, and so this is now the second bit of our answer, which is a one. So, so far so good. Uh, we'll load in the third bit here, which is a one. So we'll load that in. There's no change because the result register was already storing a one. We'll add that uh, with the third bit of the second operand, which is a zero. Again, no change. One, that is the third bit of our answer. That's still correct. Uh, and then we'll load in the final bit, uh, which is going to be a one. We load that in. We didn't see any change there, but now we're going to add that with the final bit of our second operand. Uh, and there we go. We see that our result register is zero. That's the fourth bit of our answer and our carry is one. That's the fifth bit of our answer. So we just added two four bit numbers together. The machine is working perfectly. So there we have it, 130 vacuum tubes properly doing arithmetic and logic operations. We are able to clock in instructions. We're able to modify data and get outputs from that. This is pretty much 
a vacuum tube computer at this point. Uh, now we're still missing some important parts. Uh, below this here, we still have to build the output enable register as well as the multiplexer so that we can uh, put data back onto the bus and do some more interesting control with it. Uh, and also you notice that we had to write down all of the answers because there's no memory on this computer and memory is difficult. Um, but I am just so happy to see this thing actually working. This is awesome. I'm super excited about it. Plus it just looks really, really cool. Uh, but the temperature in the room has now increased by about 10 degrees since I started filming. Uh, so I'm going to shut it all down, open up the door and turn the fan on so that we can maybe cool the room off a bit. Uh, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really excited about this. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next episode.